grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Thank you, and a warm welcome to this service of Eucharist at Chester Cathedral. Welcome, too, to Canon Lamech Mutete, who's going to preach for us today, who's come from Tatton Hall. A couple of announcements, in case you didn't know. There are two particular funerals this week, one on Thursday at 10 o'clock for Molly Dutton, and there's a memorial service on Friday at 11.30 for Margaret Farrer. They are, as I understand, open to the public. So a prayer for the children before they leave. Loving God, bless the children and the leaders in this place as they seek you and your love today. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We come to worship God in our need. We come to God who meets us in Jesus. We come as we are because it is God who invites us to come. God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Let us then show our love for him by confessing our sins in penitence and faith. You raise the dead to life in the spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. God, the Father of mercies, has reconciled the world to himself through the death and resurrection of his Son, Jesus Christ, not holding our sins against us, but sending his Holy Spirit to shed abroad his love among us. By the ministry of reconciliation, entrusted by Christ to his Church, receive his pardon and peace to stand before him in his strength alone, this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. Almighty God, you have made us for yourself, and our hearts are restless till they find their rest in you. Pour your love into our hearts and draw us to yourself, and so bring us at last to your heavenly city, where we shall see you face to face, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The reading is taken from Paul's letter to the Galatians, chapter 3. But the scripture has imprisoned all things under the power of sin, so that what was promised through faith in Jesus Christ might be given to those who believe. Now before faith came, we were imprisoned and guarded under the law until faith would be revealed. Therefore, the law was our disciplinarian until Christ came, so that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer subject to a disciplinarian, for in Christ Jesus you are all children of God through faith. As many of you as were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male and female, but all of you are one in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord.
read of verse 13. Glory to you, Lord. Now, when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah. For flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter. And on this rock I will build my church. And the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he sternly ordered this of the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. This is the gospel of the Lord. Listen in the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. In today's world, we have so much stress. Stress put on our identity, who we are and what our status in society is. The question is, how do you respond when someone asks you, who are you? If it is a question asked to you by someone you don't know, you can understand that. But if it is someone whom you have lived with for years, with the assumption that they know you, and they ask you this question, I'm sure you ponder in your heart as to why and what has gone wrong with that individual. In our society, who we are seems so important. When we open some of the celebrity magazines, all we see is who these persons are and what they do. I'm not sure how much we benefit from such knowledge, but nevertheless, we want to know. In our society, we have become obsessed with titles. In fact, some have gone through great length to embellish their titles, to glamorize or promote who they are. Here are some that I found when I was working through my sermon for this Sunday. Color distribution technician, that's a painter and decorator. Domestic technician, housewife. Highway environmental hygienist, road cleaner. Gastronomical hygiene technician, dishwasher. Media distribution officer, paperboy. Sanitation consultant, toilet cleaner. The list is endless. I don't know what title we as clergy have. Maybe the lay people know it, but they will never want to share with us. 
Now, today we read in the Gospel of Matthew that as they entered the region of Caesarea Philippi, Jesus asked them to sit down. He had a question to ask. Who do people say that the Son of Man is? This is a simple question. Everyone there was eager to answer or respond to Jesus because this question has nothing to do with those who have been following Jesus. You can say virtually anything. It is the second question that made most of the disciples to look down because they had no answer. The disciples answered the first question by listing a few names from the past. Oh, people say you're John the Baptist. Some say you are Elijah. And some say you are Jeremiah. If I was Jesus, I would actually stop breathing. Because remember, we are talking about a man who had saved lives, fed 5,000 people or more, excluding women and children. The blind were made to see, the lamb were made to walk. And by then, Jesus is almost thinking, the world now knows who I am. Unfortunately, no. All these years, they look at me see, and they think I'm Jeremiah. They look at me, they think I'm Elijah. They look at me and they think I'm John the Baptist. But yes, people do that. You can walk with them for years. They don't know who you are. They can smile at you. They can share me with you. But they don't know you. But Jesus, knowing that his time was about to come, this is a very important question to those who are going to carry on with his ministry. No wonder why he had to ask these important questions. And so it is the second question that matters to those people who walked with him, those who are going to continue proclaiming the gospel of Christ after his departure. But who do you say that I am? And Peter answers this question. You are the Messiah the son of the living God. We know this is the right answer because Jesus confirms it by praising Peter's insight and bestowing upon him the keys of the kingdom. But the answer is just the beginning. Jesus' response to Peter indicates that his identity as Messiah is not obvious by way of human insight. No. The answer is as a result of Peter's discernment of divine revelation and not obvious to flesh and blood. In first century Judaism, there was no single understanding of the word Messiah. The Hebrew Mashia, from which we get the English Messiah, means anointed. A Messiah was one anointed by God for a special purpose, a special mission. A Messiah could be a prophet or a king, perhaps a warrior or perhaps not. The Gospel of Matthew was written shortly after the failed Jewish revolt against Rome. In the wake of the destruction of the temple and the devastation of Jerusalem, God's promise to Israel were at stake. This is the context in which the meaning of Jesus as Messiah was being worked out. In other words, the Gospel story reflects a post-resurrection perspective. Peter responded to that question in verse 16 and, and said, you are the Christ. This is the answer that Jesus was looking for. This response means more than salvation. It is a response that will bring a joy unspeakable. If we say that Jesus is the Christ, then we must move aside from the throne of our own life and let Jesus rule our lives. If he was the greatest offering of love that could be given to humanity, then we must embrace that love and live each day in the knowledge of just how much God loves all of his creation. I will now ask you this morning, who do you say that Jesus is to other people? Are you able to put into words who Jesus is to you? 
or what he means to you, let alone explaining your image of Christ to someone else. It is the greatest opportunity you will ever have to share with someone about an inclusive and an all-embracing Jesus who is not bound by color, race, tribe, or tradition. But wait, you do not know how hard it is for other people to share their faith with someone else. It is difficult. It is a mammoth task. It is true. Some have a real gift of sharing the gospel with other people, but some can only share in images, let alone writings. Whatever image of Jesus we have imprinted in our heart of hearts this morning, please pray that that image be an embracing image of Christ, of all God's people. Our images may be different, but the God we worship and the Christ that we know and we adore is simply one. No one may change the imprint of your image because it is your own personal story. It is your story, not mine, but yours. What matters on this general faith is your faith story and not a theological debate at all. Furthermore, when people approach you with a question about Jesus, they are not always looking for a huge theological answer. They are looking for your own words. They are looking for your personal response to that question. Napoleon once said about Jesus, I know man, and Jesus Christ is more than a man. Sometimes a brief statement such as Napoleon's can be so effective in the lives of other people. The other who question I want to ask you this morning is, who do you say that I am with your actions as a person of faith? People are watching us. St. Paul writes to the Galatians, there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free man, there is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. St. Paul said this to the Galatians. He wanted them to understand that if we become Christians, followers of Jesus, we are in an undivided family which has no division, no more Jew and no more Gentile. This week, the cathedral launches the global image of Christ, and it is our hope that this global images of Christ exhibition will not only be an opportunity for us to see, listen, learn, and be transformed, but an opportunity to bring all God's people to an understanding, and I mean a deeper understanding, that the God that we worship is neither pink, blue, black, nor white, but a God of all people. This exhibition is meant to transform both lives and institutions, so that in the end, we may see more God's people of all colors being part of the dinner table. It is time every institution, churches included, look at the structure of their committees and everything else and see what color of the rainbow is missing on their model of representation. This will be the sign that we are all heirs of the kingdom of God. That is why St. Paul says again, therefore, if anyone is, is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old age is gone. The new is here. For many years, my brothers and sisters in Christ, I lived my life for myself as a senior police officer. I considered myself during that period of my life as an undercover agent for Christ. Guess what? Instead of being an all or seven old out agent for God, I was an all or nothing in the end. God does not need any undercover agents. He needs men and women that are willing to live a life that exemplifies who Jesus is. In conclusion, I would like to read you a quote from William Buckley, commentary in the Gospel of Matthew. Our knowledge of Jesus must never be at second hand. A man might know every verdict ever passed on Jesus, 
He might know every Christology that the mind of man had ever thought out. He might be able to give a competent summary of the teaching about Jesus of every great thinker and theologian and still not be a Christian. Christianity never consists in knowing about Jesus. It always consists in knowing Jesus as your personal Savior. Jesus Christ demands a personal verdict. And I mean a personal verdict. He did not only ask Peter. He is asking me and is asking you this morning. What do you think of me? Who do you think and say that I am? Amen. say together the creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things are made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. In this last week of creation time, let us pray for the earth, our endangered home, God, creator of the universe, fill us with love for your creation, for the beautiful natural world around us, for the earth from which we come and to which we will return. Jesus Christ, redeemer of the world, Teach us to value and care for the earth's precious resources and to preserve this world in its diversity. Help us to prevent flora and fauna being wantonly destroyed for human greed or pleasure. To cherish and nurture all remaining species of life on earth and to live without taking more than we can give. Spirit of the living God, guide us to sustain the earth in harmony with the natural world around us. Help us to renew what we have broken, damaged and destroyed through ignorance, carelessness, or greed. Where we have taken too much water, polluted the air, dumped plastic into the sea, 
cut down trees, killed vegetation, destroyed forests and wildlife habitats, and made fertile soils barren. Inspire your worldwide church and world leaders to put an end to this damage and decay, and lead us towards a green, sustainable and peaceful world in which future generations may enjoy the fruits of your creation. Lord, in your mercy. God, our creator, we pray for our global images of Christ exhibition, for the artists and their work, that it may help us all to look with fresh eyes on something we thought we knew to explode the Western myth about Jesus' appearance and to celebrate our multicultural society. Lord, in your mercy, hear us. God of compassion, we pray for the bereaved, the suffering and the sick for all who love and care for them, for Richard, for Labrinka Delanowska, and for others known to us who are in need of our prayers. May they feel the comfort and peace of your loving, healing touch and we pray for those we love dearly, yet see and hear no longer. Margaret Farrer, Sheila Dutton, and others we silently name who will forever be in our hearts. Let light perpetual shine upon them and grant them your everlasting peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Christ, our wounded healer, suffering the pains of creation, lead us back to the tree of life, to the source of healing for the earth. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Would you please stand, if you're able and you wish. We are all one in Christ Jesus. We belong to him through faith, heirs of the promise of the spirit of peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Thank you. Let's offer one another in whatever way a sign of that peace. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Almighty God, good Father to us all, your face is turned towards your world. In love you gave us Jesus your Son to rescue us from sin and death. Your word goes out to call us home to the city where angels sing your praise. We join with them in heaven's song.
Father of all, we give you thanks for every gift that comes from heaven. To the darkness, Jesus came as your light. With signs of faith and words of hope, he touched untouchables with love and washed the guilty clean. This is his story. This is our song. The crowds came out to see your son, yet at the end they turned on him. On the night he was betrayed, he came to table with his friends to celebrate the freedom of your people. This is his story. This is our song. Jesus blessed you, Father, for the food. He took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and said, This is my body, given for you all. Then Jesus gave thanks for the wine. He took the cup, gave it, and said, This is my blood, shed for you all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. This is our story. This is our song. Send your spirit on us now that by these gifts we may feed on Christ with opened eyes and hearts on fire. May we and all who share this food offer ourselves to live for you and be welcomed at your feast in heaven where all creation worships you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. Gathering our prayers and praises into one, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father.
Let us pray. Lord, we pray that your grace may always precede and follow us and make us continually to be given to all good works through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In, in the, the name, name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen.